Whenever you see people upload gameplay with, with guns that perhaps aren't considered meta, it's because they've taken into account what makes this gun so good, what makes this gun tick, and then engineered their positioning and changed their playstyles to make that work. And that's the thing they don't explain. That's the one thing they don't necessarily talk about when it comes to their gameplay. They'll say, yeah, I practice a lot in Kovacs, I do aim trainers, I play a lot of PvE. I did a lot of different things to make myself better at the game. And then I took that knowledge and I went into PvP and then I slayed out. You're missing a few steps. It's like, step one, draw a circle. Step two, draw the ears. Step three, draw the rest of the f***ing owl. It doesn't work like, th like that. Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ascendant Nomad and this is the second episode of Crucible Clinic. Today's episode does not feature extended practical exercises, it's more of a general discussion piece. I wanted to take the time to address a common concern that newer players have when they enter the Crucible. Specifically, this concern is about the meta, in which two questions naturally spring to mind. Should I use meta weapons and do you have to use the meta in order to be successful? When you're looking to compete amongst the very best, yes, the meta is an unavoidable part of the discussion of loadouts, but Crucible Clinic is here to start at the very beginnings, for the Guardians who seek to go from Absolute Zero to Trials 1v3 Hero. What's far more important for the Guardians finding their feet in the Crucible is to use what works best for them. It's a shorter episode this time, much shorter. I think quite a few of you rightly pointed out that the last one was a bit too long. Because of your feedback, I have a better idea of how to present these videos moving forward. So thank you. Please keep it coming. And thank you, all of you, for 50,000 subscribers on the channel. Presenting to you, Crucible Clinic, Episode 2. Enjoy. Loadouts. Forever the most contentious topic in Destiny 2, because... People are always asking, what gun should I use? What should I be running? Why is this gun better than the other? Is this the god roll? Do god rolls even matter? How do I use this for builds? How do I do this, that, and the other? And truthfully, it really doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Because here's the thing. There are so many guns in this game, all right? One of the beautiful things about Destiny is there are so many different guns in this game. There's so many different options to explore. There's so many different weapons and, and styles of play and builds that you can create that, to me at least, it's less about the weapon and more about what speaks to you most, what you can make work. Now, obviously, I'm talking mostly in a general sense. I'm talking like quick play. I'm talking about very casual crucible. I am not talking about trials. I'm not talking about competitive because at those levels, at those levels, the meta becomes very, very important to consider. In fact, it becomes inescapable to consider. But when you're just starting out in Destiny, when you're just getting your feet wet in PvP, don't worry so much about the weapons in terms of what is good and what is bad. With weapons, with weapons, so you might get a blue auto rifle, you might get a scout rifle, you might get this, that, and the other. And the important thing is to, is to try them out. Try out different weapons and see which one works for you. The most important thing right now when you're starting out is to find weapons that you agree with. Because if you are fighting your weapons, if you are struggling with making your weapons work in terms of trying to hit your shots, landing your shots, making them aim well for you, you're going to struggle with everything else in your game. Positioning, radar, game sense, none of that matters because you're going to be so focused on just trying to get that gun to work. This is why a lot of people, when they get a new gun, the immediate thing that they do is they just go out and shoot it a bunch to get some kills, try it on PvE, try it on PvP, and... They try and get familiar with the gun because every gun in Destiny has its own unique quirk and personality and some guns demand to be used in a certain way. And the differences in the personality traits can come down to like a range bar stat or it could come down to a handling stat or it could be coming down to the like the hidden aim assist stat. The guns have so many variables in how they behave that because each one has like different preset variables, you can kind of say they have personalities. That's why I said they have personalities. And like people, with or like everyone has their personality, not every person is for you, you know? Not every movie is for you, not every artist is for you, you know? You gotta find what works for you, what speaks to you. And that's the most important thing. As an example, this has been my most recent loadout. Please ignore the build and this Frankenstein 
set of things here. Actually, I'll fix this because now I'm feeling self-conscious. <laughs> Two hours later. The most latest loadout that I've been running has been Dead Man's Tale and a Glacial Chasm. These two weapons don't make any sense on paper in terms of a meta dis discussion. But I think something that people don't perhaps realize is because Dead Man's Tail can be accurately hip fired and get precision shots on, you can use this super, super aggressively. And it has the flexibility to have a bunch of range as well. So if you want to take up long range engagements, you can definitely do that as well. With Glacier Clasm, fusion rifles may have gotten a little buff and nobody's talking about them because understandably all the focus is on things like igneous hammer bottom dollar frozen orbit and a little bit on salvage to salvo but we're not talking that much about it also palindrome these are the sexy weapons snipers and hand cannons whenever there's a new one out they invariably always get the most attention because they're, mo they're the most popular archetypes frozen orbit as well is also an incredible gun very very nice in terms of sniper behavior, personally speaking, I could be talking out my ass completely, but I feel this behaves very similarly to Beloved in terms of the snappiness, reticle friction, whatever you want to call it, the intangibles of sniping. Frozen Orbit reminds me a lot of Beloved. But this loadout in conjunction speaks to me and works really well for me. And this has a lot to do with my playstyle as well. I'm more of a passive player. I'm not someone who likes to get particularly aggressive, but with the right tools, I feel like this this loadout not only just speaks to my sort of quarterback-like sensibilities, but it also allows me to switch it up, and if I want to slay out and get 50 kills in the game, I can do it very easily with the, these two weapons. Paired also with my Stasis Revenant build with Mask of Bacris. But this is just one particular loadout. One particular loadout of many. I think a lot of people would probably say this is one of the best loadouts in the game. Ace of Spades and Felwinter's Lie. And why not? Amazing hand cannon, amazing shotgun, pair that with some stompies, and you're off to the races, right? Seems logical enough to me. And it is. This is what you'll see a lot of in, in sweats, or maybe they'll use Hawkmoon, or maybe they'll use uh, Dire Promise or something, but this is the de facto gun for, for high level play for a lot of people. Now, the, most, the gun that gets the most attention is the Igneous Hammer, and then now we pair it with something with make sure I get this out. Let's get this Astral. It's not a particularly good Astral, but it's good enough for me. So Astral and Igneous Hammer would be a pretty standard Trials loadout. Or you can swap that in for bo Bottom Dollar, or you could swap that in for Palindrome. There's a lot of different loadouts here that, that make sense and you'll see a lot of people talking about. But you can also have just as much success in the Crucible with a 180. And I'll show you one of my favorite 180s right now. Now, this is the Posterity. It's a statistical not forgotten clone. The only thing it's missing is Maghal. You pair it with Rapid and Rampage, put Rampage spec on it, you can get three taps pretty easily with it. Now, you have to understand that certain weapons are not as good as other weapons. 180 RPM hand cannons are kind of looked down upon because they're a 1.0 time to kill. Which is funny because Igneous Hammer is also a 1.0 time to kill. So what's the difference here? The difference here is that Posterity does 58 critical damage and Igneous Hammer does 90 or 92, depending if you've uh, masterworked the Adept version. You get a little bit more on the impact bar. 180 RPMs also have perfect in-air accuracy. 120s don't, unless you use an Icarus mod. And for me, I'm using Adept Icarus for this particular reason and it's pretty much perfect in conjunction with the cones and in range, And but that's another discussion for another day. I have equally the same amount of fun with Posterity as I do with Igneous Hammer. Even though they're completely different playstyles altogether. The reason being is because this demands a certain type of playstyle. I know that this is 58 to the head, so I can't just stay back. I can't just stay back and pot shop from afar. I find using 90 RPM hand cannons, or sorry, 120 RPM hand cannons incredibly boring because all you have to do is stay back a distance. Is it satisfying to wipe a whole team? Yes, believe me, it is. But 180s, because they require constant on target, it's, they need you to be constantly on target. You lose a lot of the burst damage that makes 140s more preferable. So you have to get up close and personal, basically. And that tests your positioning, it tests your radar awareness, it tests your game sense. To pull off play with a 180 to make this work is not easy, and that's why I like it. I enjoy the challenge, personally. Some people might say that's too much of a challenge. 
and therefore would much rather prefer to go to, to Igneous Hammer, Palindrome, or any other, the many other options that are, on paper, more viable than this. And that's fine. I don't shame that, that's fine, and I'm definitely making my life more difficult by doing that. Ease of use definitely plays a factor when it comes to the meta. But when you're selecting your loadouts, you have to understand that it's not necessarily about what's the easiest to use, or what's the most damage, or what's the fastest time to kill. Those stats mean very, very little when it comes to the general course of action, because it doesn't take into account what enemies are using, it doesn't take into account what you're comfortable with, it doesn't take into account how good are certain things in certain situations. Would I use posterity in trials? Absolutely not. Because this, like one of the biggest hidden uh, metrics for trials that, that makes a huge difference is body shot damage. That's why I prefer running a 72 in trials rather than 90, because I know even if I don't hit the head, I'm doing 158 to the body, and that completely neutralizes their ability to push and, and do anything whatsoever. If you're interested in unique damage values for different guns, definitely look at Mercules' uh, massive weapon spreadsheet breakdown. It'll list down every single archetype, every single damage number it, it can, can produce, and also the time to kill for every single archetype in the game, even pretty much every single gun in the game, as near as makes no difference. I'll leave that in the description below. So. When it comes to selecting your loadout, understand that there are certain guns have strengths and weaknesses. Understand that some guns are definitely more suited to PvE than PvP. All right. If you want to switch it up, use Wither Horde in PvP, but don't expect anything crazy, right? Um, certain perks also are perhaps a little bit more suited for PvE. Frenzy, as an example, I find takes too long to proc in normal Crucible. And also, it, it, it comes out, it deep rocks, or just goes away too quickly as well for my liking. But the thing is, understanding these perks and understanding what makes these guns tick is part of the fun of discovering loadouts and discovering builds that work for you. A lot of people will say, no bro, this is way too much work. I'm just going to watch Frostbolt or Fallout or Drewski for their opinions on the best guns, and I'm going to do that. And that's totally fine as well. All I'm here to say is that it's not as simple as you think. It doesn't have to be the meta. You don't have to use a 140 or a 120. You don't have to use a 72 RPM sniper. You don't have to use anything you don't want to. You could use a Jan 7. You get Rampage on this thing? You get Rampage to proc? This thing will be nuts. It'll, it'll shred, absolutely shred. The reason it doesn't get as much love is because A, it's a pulse rifle, and B, it's a 390 RPM pulse rifle. Is it statistically inferior to the 340s? Yes, absolutely. That's a 0.67 time to kill, this is a 0.93. But with, under the right conditions, you have a good roll, you have this right game for it, you can absolutely shred. Like, when you, whenever you see people upload gameplay with, with guns that perhaps aren't considered meta, it's because they've taken into account what makes this gun so good, what makes this gun tick, and then engineered their positioning and changed their playstyles to make that work. And that's the thing they don't explain. That's the one thing they don't necessarily talk about when it comes to their gameplay. They'll say, yeah, I practice a lot in Kovacs, I do aim trainers, I play a lot of PvE. I did a lot of different things to make myself better at the game. And then I took that knowledge and I went into PvP and then I slayed out. You're missing a few steps. It's like, step one, draw a circle. Step two, draw the ears. Step three, draw the rest of the f***ing owl. It doesn't work like, th like that. There's a lot of nuance and intricacies. So, that's pretty much all I wanted to say with respect to loadouts. Is that, when you're going to Crucible for the first time, when you're trying to figure out what works for you, try everything. And try whatever you have, whether it's a good roll or a bad roll. Remember, rolls are an amelioration over a base weapon stat. Yes, of course, some rolls affect your stats differently. Like if I put extended mad over high cal, I lose range and reload speed, but I get a lot more lot more uh, magazine. If I use this long range scope and switch to a short zoom, I'll lose range, but I'll get more handling. So obviously the behavior of the guns change depending on what rolls you, are, you have, but the base weapon stats don't change. The Recoil direction doesn't change unless you use counterbalance mods and select different barrels. Every gun has a personality, every gun has a certain feel to them. 
go out and use what works for you. Don't be a slave to the meta right away. Once we get more advanced and we start being com comfortable with our weapons, when we start getting comfortable with our weapons to the point where we start thinking about positioning, rate, uh, like game awareness and all the rest of that, that's when you come back to the meta discussion and you start saying, okay, I got really good with this 390 RPM pulse rifle, but now I want to go into comp and I want to go into freelance comp and I want to be able to hold my own. That's when you start looking at the meta weapons and start looking at them, not because somebody said it was good, but start looking at them in terms of what kind of situations they allow you to be in. That's the biggest thing to, to think about when it comes to loadouts. What situations do these guns allow me to be in? And it just so happens that 120s right now allow you to be in the most amount of situations very comfortably. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave me uh, a question in the comments below. All right. That wasn't very smooth, but you get the idea. If you like this video, you know what to do. I'm a Senate Nomad. I'm your Crucible Doctor. Cheers.